we had a, uh, about a month ago, we had uh, Pedro Moldovar here for um, his latest film. And he was talking about how he was reminiscing about the 80s, which his latest film is sort of a throwback to his 80s, sort of his 80s films. Um, and he, he mentioned that that period, like sort of the post-Franco period, um, was sort of a, a, you know, an explosion of creativity and self-expression. And I was kind of wondering if maybe if there was a parallel situation post Pinochet. I know it's not exactly the same, and I, maybe I'm, I'm breaking it down into something that's not particularly yeah. a parallel, but I'm just wondering if there was at least something along those lines happening there. Yeah, I mean, it took there. a while. It took a while because after the dictatorship, there were a lot, a lot of movies made about the dictatorship or that had a lot of political content. Like, everything was about it. Like, Chile was known to make movies about... I mean, to, yeah, it was known to uh, be making movies about that particular subject, and it was kind of getting old and like too much resentment, even though it's something that nobody wants to forget, right? But like, it felt like culturally we're, we were stuck with that subject matter, too much resentment, too much sadness. And uh, I think uh, after like whatever, a decade, um, new things started to come out. And, uh, but some people have stayed with that subject matter, like Pablo Larraín himself. You know, like he made a trilo trilogy about the dictatorship, ended with no, no. that's the end. Yeah, see no too, by the way. It's a yeah, really it's great good. film. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, now I feel that people are uh, younger people that really didn't go through the grief of that period. I really skipped it like by one year. Mm -hmm. So I was really never affected. It was never in my mind. And my family, were they were f fascist. So... <laughs> <laughs> Not fascist, but they were <laughs> right wing dead. Like, I honestly once got to kiss Pinochet, but yeah, mm -hmm. they'd made me. Wow. Yeah. On a chick, <laughs> on the chick. Wow. Uh, they made you? They made me. I mean, I was six years old and like, they made me give him like a teddy bear or something. <laughs> it's a crazy story, yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah. <laughs> so he, for, he was like a weird Santa Claus uh -huh. for me. It was strange. <laughs> Did you have some experience with him when you were older too? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, right? Didn't you? I mean, uh, no, I never no, really crazy? had a, no, never an interaction like that. No, no, no physical oh. interaction with Pinochet after oh. that one. Right. <laughs> Any interaction? I mean, we sang happy birthday to him with like. Yeah, right. Yeah, so and for the plebiscite, uh, yeah, plebiscite is that a word? No. Plebis uh, is that the word? The election, that well, the, 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 the plebiscite I think is like the, election before the election yeah, anyway yeah, i was like whatever. eight years old <laughs> in the back of a truck yeah. screaming like pino chip you know just not fair right it's like i didn't know who he was mm -hmm. but uh yeah you know yeah so i would never make a movie about him do you do you do you consider any of your films to be political i think politics are intrinsic to any subject matter but i don't go that's not my starting point mm -hmm. it's so it's usually more of an exorcism of things personal things and uh i'm really character driven and I'm always thinking about the psychology of the character. I've never, and I think politics are always going to be there. Like in Crystal Ferry, you see these Americans in Chile acting the way they act, and then there's politics right there, you know. And the maid, also the social classes, it's all, it's always going to be there.